Fonium. And it's supposed to be lap seven, and some of you were having difficulty. So today we're gonna go through some of the steps and show you how to do that. We are also going to cover iPy widget, how you can actually make your add some interactive components to your map so the user for example can change the opacity, you can do all kinds of things. This essentially div map is about you have see the toolbar and then you can click the toolbar to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is what we're going to uh, cover uh, um, in the second half <coughs> of the lecture. And so originally I saw that you guys can figure out like Folium, but it looks like it's a bit challenging for some of you because iPy Livre and um, Folium, they're both like Python packages for doing mapping. And they're all built on top of the JavaScript library called Livre, okay? But they are very two different libraries. So Folium is much, has a longer history. It was relatively older, uh, but it was quite limited. iPy Livre was newer, maybe three or four years old, but it has a lot more flexibility. Uh, more, more powerful and but behind the scene they are all doing the same thing so if you want to try it out you can just google it called leaflet so this is actually a javascript library uh, you can trade it out and so javascript library is so called the front end the back end here actually use python to do that so we have folium we have ipy leaflet but they have very they are very different so ipy leaflet is more like two-way street you can make things, train, make changes interactively before basically you can display the map and then you can add layer, you can remove layer after you display the map. But Folium is different. Folium is more like one way street. Once the map is displayed, it's a done deal. You cannot make changes to the map. So that's why it's quite limited, but it was very popular because it has longer history. But you have to remember when you, when you uh, uh, type map M, and then execute that, done. You cannot do anything else to the map. If you want to add a layer or something, you have to create a new map, or you have to move your uh, code before you display the map. Understand? So I'm gonna quickly show you how the differences between those. And so Folium usually is a longer history, it's rather limited, but it's usually more stable. iPy leaflet, more functionality, more flexible, but sometimes you cannot even display a map, all kind of bugs or, or, or thing you might need to deal with. So just to, want to make sure that you uh, know the differences. But behind the scene, it's all using this JavaScript library called Leaflet, and it's doing the behind the scene. So iPy Leaflet can actually send back and forth, so it can communicate with the the JavaScript library and then get the information out, can pass the information back. For them, basically, do convert all the code to JavaScript and then convert it to HTML and then display the HTML, that's it. You the, you cannot go back and modify. Also, I posted that lab 8. Uh, lab 8 should be relatively easy. Uh, so the add raster function, we already did that last, in the last lecture. Uh, but today we're gonna also cover the add image. So how we can add a static image, for example, a logo, a photo, anything to the map, okay? So this is so-called in uh, widget component, so you can add to the map. This one can only be done using iPy leaflet. You cannot do this with. Yeah, you, you can, but it's more complicated. But we are, are just going to use uh, iPy leaflet, and I'm going to show you how you can add a logo, for example, to the map, uh, if you want to. Okay. Any questions? Uh, so for the lab eight, uh, it's still next Friday, so I kind of extend it. Um, but lab seven is still this Friday. If you have difficulty, let me know. I'll send email to the group. Uh, I can help you out. Questions. If not, let's uh, just quickly go through Folium. Also, last time we already talked about the uh, T Tyler. There's also another one called Local Tile Server. This one was uh, useful for displaying local raster images. We don't have time to get into that. You're welcome to uh, try this out by yourself, uh, but we don't have time to cover this one. We only show you how to display, for example, cloud optimized GeoTIFF on the internet but it's certainly possible to do this. You just need to follow the instructions uh, if you want to. You can also look at leaf map, leaf map all the functions for visualizing local raster data set or uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF uh, on the internet. So for next, let's talk about this one, Folium, okay? As I mentioned, this is a longer history, uh, more stable, limited, but they provide similar functionality uh, to 
I believe that the 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 downside is that <coughs> sometimes the function arguments or the parameters are different. Although they they all be on top of the same stuff, but you can choose the function name or the parameter name, whatever you want. So it already started many years ago, but I believe they use different parameters. So that's one thing that some of you were having trouble. But I can show you here, I'll get started. So if you click <clears throat> this one here, look at the map, right? The nice thing about Folium is that if you create a notebook and then you add that to your website, if you display a map like this, the map will be interactive like this. But if you go to the website, G O S demo. Oh, yes, hub. If you go to this website and then examples, for example, um, intro, whatever map you see from here, uh, your map actually doesn't. Uh, I think I missed what the example here. Your map actually doesn't display here. Understand? So you, if you want, you can. You need to change it to Folium. So Folium can display the map uh, interactively. You can check out uh, leaf lab, uh, leaf map. So here I can show you uh, notebooks. Use base map. So see this one here, right? The map are all interactives. I believe they cannot do that for this uh, particular MK Docs website, uh, but it might be possible for other uh, plugin. But just that you know why the map doesn't show up. Because this one here, I'm using Folium to display the map. But I have same function for both IPileaf and Folium modules for my packages. So I can just switch one line automatically to that. But right now, you probably on your website, your website look like this. The map won't display in here. So it's normal. Um, so next, I'm going to show you how you can use Folium. But you have to pay attention. They, they are two different packages. They have different parameters. Don't just copy your code from I believe that and put into Folium, it will never work. Okay, so uh, but I'm going to show you how some of the tricks that you need to pay attention. And so in Lab Seven, I asked you to create a Folium module. Okay, so in here you should create a new .py file. Okay, so pay attention. Don't put your code in the same file because there are two packages. For example, you you go to the beginning, right? We have I believe that we have Folium. Uh, they all have the map class, so it's better to separate them. Otherwise, you cannot have the, another class called map because you okay. They need to be unique. So these are the procedures that you need when you're trying to expand your package to add more functionality. Okay. So step by step, I'll show you. Right click here, new file, and then you want to give a name to that module. Keep that in mind. If you are using a specific package, don't use the the, the file name. Don't be the same as the package you're going to use. So I'm trying to use a folium. In your code, you will need to import folium. So your file name cannot be the same name as your import library because later on when you you have this module, you can have other modules trying to call this mode function in this module, you will have trouble. So you probably need to, for example, folium. So for me, I use folium map. Um, always remember, don't use the same name. Uh, for example, don't choose a code called module called ipileaflet.py and then inside the module you import ipileaflet, it's going to cause trouble. So that actually took me many hours actually to figure out. Uh, if it's just on the file itself, everything works fine, but if you're trying to import um, the module from other module, it's going to be a headache. So for me, I was just folium, map, or fm, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. So folium map.py. Okay, that's it. So name the file is something like this. Within here, then you can do something similar like ipileaflet. If I go back to here, you need to import, right? And then you have a class uh, map or something. So it'll be similar. So in that way, when users try to use the library, you can import, for example, GOS demo, or I can import GOS demo dot folder map, right? Because by default, it's going to use this main module because we already covered this one previously, right? So you, you, by default, it's going to import everything from the main module, but we can add as many modules as you like. If you want, you can go to leaf map just to show you what it looks like. So if you go to the source code, leaf map, right? I have a bunch of modules in here. And this is the main one, leaf map to py. This one is using the ipi leaflet because it has the richest functionality, but Folium, right? You can see here. I have also has a folium map in here. 
import the library and then so in that way you can have a class map similar to the main module and then input a bunch of stuff in here this is quite complicated so don't try to copy this entire module to your stuff because I import a lot of other modules into this one so it won't work for you but you can learn from actually the, at least the structure the organization how it's being done so import for example map in here and you can scroll down you have tons of functions here I'm not asking you to do something like this like is this complicated but at least you can get an idea if you want to learn from example how to actually learn look at those functions and see what kind of packages are being used what kind of things are being done in there then we can do something very similar but for here I'm going to do like very simple one like show you how you actually create a uh, map using Folium and so if you go to the uh, Folium documentation you'll be like this here so import Folium right m equal to Folium dot map and pay attention to this one right location equal to latitude longitude what's the parameter name for ipileaflet the equivalent one is it using the location is it say it again I didn't hear you yeah center so that's the difference is Folium is location if you're trying to put the center it won't work okay and similar for the zoom for iPad leaflet like it's called zoom this one is called zoom star it's rather confusing so if you really want to like learn those packages you need to read the documentation the documentation have everything that you need but certainly in our source code we can have something to make them consistent so the user don't have to like oh is it location or is it zoom I can make them all consistent just using the center but within your source code you need to handle that so that if the user provide a center you pass the center to the location and then create a map okay so I'm going to show you how you can do that easily uh, I also have a notebook here uh, if you want it's under um, it's just a couple of lines call so here uh, let's walk through the notebook first see how uh, it works so import folium right and then again I can I can create a map uh, using the latitude and the longitude like this so as I mentioned earlier once you type M and then display the map is done don't try to add layer don't try to add geojson somewhere here below it will never work okay so this is the differences between Folium and iPad uh, Folium you can the map is displayed you can add layer later you can remove the layer later this one no it's it's done it's it's fixed because the map has been converted to HTML and then just display the render the HTML uh, on the map so here right it's uh, the center and there's also another one called is you see once you uh, press comma you will see all the parameters and so height position tiles ATTR again ATTR okay that one is rather confusing uh, I believe that it's called attribution uh, folium is called ATTR so you need to make sure that you ex ex use it exactly the same but there should be one called uh, zoom start here if you see my mouse zoom start by default equals 10 iPad leave it the parameter name is called zoom and the default value is only 2 so that's why you see the differences in here I can certainly for example I can change to if you want the map for the US usually I will put latitude 40 and then uh, longitude negative 100 and then the zoom so here you need to use zoom start okay don't use zoom it's not going to work so now if I display this one it should be a map center around the US right so if I just put zoom see if it works you see it doesn't work so the, this source code for example center right it doesn't work but this one works for your for your package using iPad leader if you're using iPad leader this was, was just fine so this is why you always need to read the documentation make sure that the parameters different functions sometimes the package we show you the error some package will not show the error but it doesn't display the map so that's actually a little bit more difficult to debug this is better because it shows you that the parameter doesn't exist so I'm going to run again here right then you can create the function using this using your uh, integrate this into your module so the user don't have to import volume <coughs> they don't have to know for them they just know your package and then they can create a folder map directly so what we're trying to do here is actually pretty simple look at this one <coughs> we import a uh, folder library 
<coughs> excuse me and then just create a map so we can do the same thing just like what we did for the main module like in here import like folium and then class map folium map dot map and then df init something like that so here just import folium and then class <coughs> map right so you you're going to inherit from the folium map so folium dot map <coughs> and then i will just let um so the first function you need to add is df oops nice how oh, nice oh it's actually copied from uh from i believe it this one probably doesn't work so don't accept everything because you see a center zoom um we can try but you don't want to like sometimes it's cause confusion so you'll be uh, let me accept and then we can make changes okay let me delete all of this <coughs> But it's good to at least have the super underscore underscore, right? And inside here, you see right now the df in it. In it. You can certainly use the center because this is one that we use for the ipy libre and also for your package. But inside, you actually like this. So center equal to this will be changed to location. Super means I'm getting all those parameters and then I pass back into the folder map. But inside the folding map, this is called location. It's not called center. So I have say location and then equal to. So this would be zoom start actually. <clears throat> and I'm not sure about this one. Probably we don't need that. Uh, scroll wheel zoom is different. So I think pretty much this is how it works for your package. When you add a module <clears throat> to your package, that built on top of folium so now user can just import the name of your package or dot folium map and then they will be able to create like something like this so let's try it out um i'm going to create something here new code block so what you need to do right now you'll be <coughs> import okay the name of your package gos demo dot you see when you when you hit dot, that means right now I'm going to import this sub module. Uh, so folder map, and usually this is what I will do, right? Is um, GOS demo. So in that way, user can just create a map, just change this line, <coughs> just change this line. Everything else remains the same. So maybe let me do it like this, just to show you like what we did in the past, right? So import. GOS demo, this is the main package, right? So in the past, we have implemented something like this. So GOS demo, dot map, center, zoom, and then like this. Right? So this would be the map. In the previous one, we already implemented. But now, I can just ask the user. User can do this. <clears throat> OS demo, dot, folder map, is um, GOS demo. So essentially, users only need to change one line everything else remain the same so look at this one here see if it works i hope so you see this one right now using folium is not ipy lift anymore if you notice uh there's um the controls here on the map right this only have zoom in and zoom out but if i remove this one here <coughs> see that i have this one and the button i also have the there's control here Okay, makes sense. So now this is how the essentially how the uh, leaf map was constructed is that the package have similar functionality and then so user only need to change one line, everything else remain the same. So this is called plotting back and you can choose to do whatever you want. Just like okay, now I'm trying to create a map or I'm trying to watch a movie. User don't care, right? The user can select okay, I want Netflix or I want Disney Plus or I want Amazon Prime. Behind the scene, you just change one line and then everything else the, the same. So user then not have to go online to learn or oh, how does the Netflix interface work or how does the Amazon Prime work. It's the same thing. I'm just going to create a map. I'm just going to watch a movie. I don't really care about the technical details. I just change one line. Everything else remains the same. So now you see, I have the map. Exactly. The behind the scene almost the, the pretty much the same. But again, this one, if you're using the iPad, it's a lot more flexible. I want to show you how you can do, do, do stuff. 
But for now, this is what it is, right? Then you can do the same thing. For example, I can, you can add some base map. You can uh, add some raster data layer. You'll be the same thing like this one. But you will have to use the, you have to look at the documentation. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, causing some trouble. So here, they say I want to add a function called maybe, um, how about this one? <clears throat> add high layer. So that means I can give a an URL and then Folium can add the layer to the map. Okay, just like we're adding the base map <clears throat> similarly. But for now, you can just copy the same thing. So usually what you would do is that if you already implement that for one module, I can just copy this one and then come back to here, paste. So this, so in that way, make sure that the parameters are the same. But you have to keep in mind, this is different, okay? This one is not for volume because you are importing the IPy leaflet here, it's different. So you have to look at the folium, how folium actually add a tile layer. Uh, you're welcome to take a look at the documentation. I think it's under, uh, let me see if I can find some examples, or maybe the modules. And then, uh, I believe it's uh, <coughs> folium, bless you. So maybe tile layer. Yeah, so it's kind of like this. Uh, it's a bit challenging. It's different from uh, IPy leaflet. So, Folium has tile layer, and so the first parameter is called tile, and then minimum zoom, maximum zoom. Uh, you have all these parameters. So what we need essentially is to construct a tile layer so that Folium can use. Okay. So if you come back to this one here. If you're still using the same URL, let me do it this way. You'll be, oh, perfect. Uh, GitHub Copilot freak up for me. So if we fold them, dot tile layer, and then the parameter is called tiles, okay? I believe that the parameter name is called URL. If you use URL, you're gonna, not going to see the, the layer. So, and then the name, the attribution, again, ATTR, not attribution. So if you go back to the, <coughs> This one here, right? URL name attribution because that's what the function, the IPy leave the tie there, uh, all those parameters. And for this one, it looks like this. And then add trial, or you can just the layer add to something. So now let's test this function, see if it works, right? So we can add tie layer, or we need just passing a URL, and then we do that. So come back to this one here, restart. Again, don't do this. Pay attention. <laughs> this is what you sometimes you just to uh, do that, uh, make the mis mistakes. Okay, so once you display map, if you're using a folium, don't do this. Don't like map dot add tile layer, or you can have a URL here. This, oops, this set the URL first. So for example, I want to add the Google base map. I can copy the URL from. Uh, how about this one? Satellite map. Okay whatever I have, and then come back to here. Then m dot add tile layer, URL equal to URL, name, something like that. Run. Custom tiles, or must have an attribution, so I can just type attribution, equal to Google. Oh, done. What happened? The map doesn't show up, okay? If I change this one, remove, run, run. All right, this is IPy leaflet, so pay attention. I add the URL, boom, right? Because IPy leaflet can do that, Folium cannot. So if you really want to test this one, you will have to either remove this M, and then do it like this, and then display somewhere here. So do whatever you need to do, Display the map is the last step if you're using Folium. So now if I try this one again here, gmap.folium map <coughs> is GOS demo, right? Run, 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 boom, right? Now you have the uh, base map layer. So this is IPy leaflet. This one should work with when you sub, uh, um, <coughs> 
put this one to the Let me delete this one. So when you submit this one to the uh, the documentation to the website, the map will show up. Okay, so this is the differences between Folium and iPad Leaflet. So let me do it this way here. Control S. Right. So now you see the map. The map is actually display. Uh, before you submit, usually this is actually an HTML file. So you don't really want to. Uh, before you commit, usually you want to create the output. Otherwise, you Git, the reports are going to get bigger and bigger. When the website is being built by GitHub Actions, it can run the code, it can join the HTML, so you don't have to do it. So you, after that, I'm just copy run, run this, uh, re, um, clear all the output. So the next step, I'm going to show you how you can actually add the module to your documentation. So if you go back, I'm going to show you the example, a leaf map here, right? Uh, API reference. And then right now we only have GEOS demo, but you can add like folding map module, just like uh, leaf map, let me see if you can find here, right? Leaf map. If you go look at this one, API module, right? I have all the module actually listed in here, so I can have folium, I can have uh, all kind of modules that you want to add to the map. So next, very important, I'm gonna show you how you can actually add that one to the documentation. So here, if you go to the docs, you're gonna see a bunch of markdowns. Okay, so the markdowns you are looking at this one GOS demo talk empty and look at this. And this is the module actually showing up on the website on the main website uh, GOS demo. This is where the website is being built. When the website is being built, it's going to read that MD file and it's going to run the call and then going to extract all the information. So you will need to have <coughs> something similar for your folder map module. Then you add the module to the menu. <coughs> for now, all you need is just go to the uh, the docs folder, right click, new file, and then you can just type folium map doc md. Okay, this is the one that you need, and then you can just for example, for example from the main module, just simply copy, and then come back to here. And this is where you want to make changes. Okay, you want to customize that. So right now, this module is called Folium Map Module, <clears throat> and then you see like uh, colon 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 GOS demo dot. This one is dot Folium Map. Okay, Control S, pretty much. So once you have this one, when the website is being built, it will going to read your source code and then go to extract all the documentation. So if you want, you need to make sure that you come back to here. Probably you want to have some um, information, uh, have some doc string here. So I can come here, right click, uh, generate doc string, and we say, okay, uh, create a folding map or something, object, okay. And also the init, if you want, right click, generate doc string, and then, okay, initialize the map object, center, blah, blah. Uh, the map center. So try to have something like this, otherwise it's not going to show up on your website. So this will be the zoom level, something like that. Done. Right now we only have two functions, so it pretty much that's it. So once you have this, now you can commit the changes to your website. Uh, let's see what it looks like right now, right? It'll be something like this. And oh by the way, you need to add to the documentation to the MK docs. So the MK Docs YML, this is the one where the website, the menu is going to show up. So what you need to do here is to go to your menu and then somewhere like this one, API reference, like GOS demo and then the file. So what you want to do is to create a new item. So hit enter and then test. So right now this will be the name for the menu. So this one will be the Folium Map module. <coughs> And then folium map doc md. You see, it's pretty intelligence. So you don't need to have a full pass like this OCS and something. That would be the root directory. So you just need to type the name of your file. So it'd be something like this. So what this one is doing is adding that menu to your website. So that when you user click, they will be able to see the documentation. So control S. Pretty much. I think that's it. And so we have the folium map IMD. We also have the notebook to demonstrate uh, our functionality. 
and also we have the module and let's see if it works or not uh, first need to make sure they also uh, volume is in the requirement of txt it's already there we already added that last time so now you can say add volume map module control enter sync that's it so this is the procedure how you add a new module to your package add some functionality add a notebook and then create the md file for your website add the item to your website and then so if you want to add a new module it's the same procedure now let's come back to here and then take a look at the website see if it's running sometimes it's very common that your website is going to fail to build so even right now coming back to the website it's being built hopefully everything works fine but if it fails just click the plus icon and then click in click in you will see the error message so this is how sometimes you might need to do the debugging because um, you might add some functionality that you require dependency or something it's not there or something wrong with your source code then it's going to fail if it fail don't panic there's always a way to fix that so you just need to know how to fix that um, refresh and hopefully it will be available pretty soon it's still running so the most important one is here the docs documentation we want to make sure that uh, it actually works so right now if you want to like uh, monitor the progress on the fly you're welcome to click in and it's going to show you this is the step how the website is being built and look at this one it's going to convert all your notebooks to a website html and it is running through all your notebooks once everything works fine every the, the module the notebook should show up on your website and your website if you're using folium it should be interactive so you'll be able to see the map actually become interactive on your web page um i think it's almost done because i have many many notebooks so it takes a while uh, but if you only have two to three it should be pretty quick so only a couple seconds then you should be able to uh, see the website uh, i've been running okay any questions <laughs> Again, look at the documentation, look at the examples, look at live map. And so what I'm showing here essentially is what I started two years ago, how I actually do the development. And it takes a lot of iterations to add functionality, add new module. Okay, perfect. Everything works fine. If something is wrong, if you see a plus red uh, cross, something is wrong, then you're going to click, uh, go to actions then just click in so for example here i'm going to click this one or uh, maybe this one here for example if you see something like this not good you have to fix that if the docs say fail your website is not going to be updated so if you click in this was th this morning when i tested so if you click in deploy and this is going to show you where the error message and look at the error message for example it's converting this file and it's running into error then you look at into your notebooks see if there's anything wrong if it's wrong you fix that and then you push you should be good to go so i click the actions again you see pages build and deployment green check mark good that's what we want to see then you can go to your website now take a look refresh okay surprise volume map here surprise you see on the right now everything show up as expected i have the module coming up everything here is automatically built based on the md file that we created earlier and now you have the documentation i can look at the source code you see user will be able to inspect uh, of course you can go to github to look at the source code but this is a lot more better because you don't have to scroll to the uh, long documentation the long file now every function has a tone if the function has a documentation or the class has documentation it will show up in here right so now user can easily follow through and the next one let's double check our map okay so examples right the one we call is called folium take a look boom now the map is it interactive folium is interactive i believe that uh, the website cannot render that because it's more complicated it's a, a, a javascript it's that bi-directional html file is like a done deal it's one way street there's no back and forth so that's why folium is better for if you just want to publish a map on the web and then make it interactive you might want to use this one so here right zoom in zoom out uh, you can click in there are a lot more examples so you're welcome to 
improve your module to add more functionality. But this is essentially the same procedure. Create a module, uh, add a map class, add function, add documentation, and then add a notebook to test the functionality. Then add the markdown file to your documentation. Add the, take the I menu item to your MK docs, and then push. You should be good to go. So, so for your <coughs> uh, lab, you should try to have something like this. So you can, of course, if you want to demonstrate, you can have uh, all your functionalities similar between uh, Folium and IPyLib. So, for example, I have GOS demo, right? I have so many function functions in here. I can implement the same thing in the Folium map. But again, you need to pay attention. The function parameters might be different. So the classes are different. So you have to look at the documentation. You cannot just copy the things like work for IPyLib and then paste to Folium. Uh, the function definition, you can certainly make it very much similar. But under the hood, you have to make some changes in order to make it fully compatible. Are we clear now? So this is what you a portion of loss is for your lab seven, and hopefully right now it's more clear. But my goal is that once you have the building block and the foundation, you should be able to go out and explore by yourself, and you can take uh, resources from other packages and then build into your package. Okay, I don't want to teach you every step because otherwise you would, uh, the most important one is to learn how to solve the problem, how to learn and then adapt. Okay, and then improve. Uh, read the documentation, look at examples, and then build on top of other people's work. Uh, if you have that capability, you can build some pretty cool packages that other people be used. Otherwise, you're always like um, repeating the uh, reinvent the wheel. Everything we're teaching here is already done in Leaf Map, so you don't have to do that. But I'm showing you the step by step how you can actually build by yourself. And then once you have the, the figure out the workflow, now you can easily create a package very quickly. Add functionality, test it, release it, and then just do a lot of iterations. Okay, so that's about the uh, volume I'm going to show you. Next, we're going to switch back to IPy Leaflet and uh, IPy Widget. Uh, that's a whole different world. It's so much more flexible, but it's a little bit more complicated. So, uh, but I want to introduce it because this is essentially how you can make your uh, uh, package interactive. How to interact with the map. So, what we are going to cover. Uh, for the remaining half an hour is how to use IPy widget. So IPy leaf that actually is built on top of IPy widget. You can think about IPy widget has like back and forth, so it's bi-directional. And IPy widget actually behind the scene is built on top of JavaScript. So JavaScript is the so-called front end, and then the back end is using Python to run. So basically you're mixing JavaScript and Python. And then IPy leaf that is built on top of IPy widgets. There's so many packages built on top of IPy widget. IPy widget is basically a package that you can use in Jupyter Notebook to do a lot of interactive stuff. Uh, it's really powerful. So we're gonna show you quickly some of the things you can do using IPy widget. And if you want, you just Google it. IPy widget. You should be able to find the documentation. So here, uh, if you have time, you're welcome to go through that. But what we're gonna cover today is the widget list. Just to show you, for example, if you want to add some widget to your map uh, or to your or to your app, you have a lot of options. And this is kind of similar to when you go online, you need to enter something, you need to select something, there are a lot of options. So for example, uh, Int, Slider, right? See that? I change the slider, you see the value on the right is being updated. And this is all interactive because you can add, use the value. So think about you are adding some components to the map and it allows the user to change. You get the value and then do computation, right? So, for example, you have a bunch of base maps. A user have to run the function to add the base map, but can I design a drop-down list and have these all the base maps and then users just select from whatever they want and then display? Question? All right, so there's something you can do, but uh, let's look more here, flow, uh, and then you can have it vertical, you can have all kind of components, you can have like progress bar, uh, text, uh, check boxes right here and selection for example drop down list so for your final project this is probably something you might want to utilize is to make a package and then have these kind of interactive components uh, we have two more weeks to cover how you can actually add that one to the map but today we're just going to do something simple 
for example, add a logo to your map, uh, add a static image to your map, and selection, right? You can have something like this. Uh, you can have something like this string, text box. You can even have passwords, um, equation, HTML. You have button. Uh, you can also have output. So output. This is the uh, very powerful one. Um, I will show you how to use that. You can have this all the button. So think about here, right? You can also have a date, for example, you can pick the date. So within your map, once you add a component, user can select from that and then they can pick the date. You can use the date to do computation. So send back to your program, you can do that. Um, you see, there are a lot of options. You can even design a button that allow user to upload a file from their computer to your app. So let's say you develop an interactive app web app and then but you want you want the user to customize the input so you can have a button use a click they can upload the file and then you can uh, use that to do computation okay so there are lots of options in here we go very quickly show you how to actually use that um, and this will be something you need to do for for example for lab 8 uh, i have a function uh, lab 8 is about basically two components the first one is add raster the second one is add image so in here this one we already covered last time so um, and we're going to cover this one how to use IPy widget uh, to add a component to the map and let me open the the notebook uh, you, you can download the notebook from the GOS demo website if you want so here this is the IPy the IPy widget <coughs> close uh, others and so this is the link to the IPy widget website before I do that, I want to show you like how to actually make that interactive. So this is the function that we already added last time. So add raster. So I'm going to import uh, GOS demo and then create an interactive map, right? We also implement the add raster function. So basically it allows you to add any cloud optimized GeoTIFF on the internet to the map. So I run this one. I hope it works. Okay. See that? We have the map and we have the layer here right, this is what we did on tuesday so how to actually make this one interactive for example right now i want to change the layer opacity so look at this one here the layer opacity um you can because ipi leave that is very power it's very flexible so i can change the layer opacity interactively but let me show you how to change it programmatically so here uh so the let me add a new code block in here right so if you type m dot layers, run this one, you see here, this right now, this map has two data layers, okay? The first one is the base map layer. The second one is the layer we add. So here, URL, and then this is the T-Tyler. If you remember, the middleman URL, the URL that we created using the middleman. So how do we actually change uh, the layer opacity? So think about here, this is a, uh, this one is a tuple, so we can actually, uh, just like a list, we can access to the tuple, so the item. So uh, tuple in uh, Python start index start from zero, one, right? So here the base map, the index will be zero. Uh, the raster layer that we added, actually the index will be one. Or you can just negative one, which whatever way you like. I can just square brackets, negative one, take a look, okay? Negative one. Now we actually we have access to the data layer. So this is so called the IPy widget. It's right now becomes a widget and then you have so many attributes. We can change the attributes of the widget. So take a look at this one. I can here dot you see URL. You can actually look into the URL of that. Or I can change the opacity. So here dot opacity. Okay, so by default, the opacity will be one. So pay attention, look at this map right now, right? The image, the raster. This is where you can actually change the opacity. So I can do here, opacity equal to 0.5. Take a look. Take a look at the map, okay? Oops, see that? All right, you can change the opacity. Right now it's 0.5, I can change to 0.1. Even more transparent, you see? Everything's interactive. So every every component on the map is a widget. And that widget has associated attributes so you can customize it. You can make it really, really flexible. And so you can change it back to one. Again, 
this is only possible through ipi lead that you won't be able to do that for volume volume is done deal the map is displayed it's gone it's you cannot change it so now let me show you how you can actually make it more fun uh this is that we can use the uh because it's an ipi widget it has a function called interact so interact means you can actually have a, uh, a component coming up to change that so now let me show you how you can actually do that so m uh layer dot so here interact you see because it's, it's built on top of ipad widget so it has a function called interact okay and then parentheses so interact that means you can interact with any attributes of this widget okay so we are going to interact with the attribute called opacity so pay attention to this one opacity and then equal to oh it's perfect there's just so many i mean it's just only one so you be just opacity and then look at this one zero one one and then point one so what this one is extended using a so-called uh, uh float slider float slider means it's a floating point so the minimum is zero maximum will be one every time you're going to change point one so pay attention here let me run this one do you see a slider bar at the bottom here right now this is i'm we're going to cover this one later but look at this one and see the slider oh, oh. you will see like it's very long this is because the uh, uh visual studio call if you open it in um Jupyter lab or Jupyter notebook it should be normal i will show you later but for now just see let's look at the magic okay this is the layer right this is the raster layer so take a look how's that is that cool right and this is essentially if you use diff map right see to change the layer opacity interactively it's it's behind the scene is running something like this okay and you can change the step so minimum maximum the step so every time you change my slider you see 0 0.1 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.7 right you can change it to a lower number if you want i can change it to 0 0.05 run this one again now it's 0 0.05 right see and you can add this component to your map if you want to so the user can actually um interact with this component within your um, map <laughs> and uh, let me see here so let me clear this one uh, so next i'm going to show you using a uh, jupyter lab because right now in visual studio code is not fully uh, compatible so you will see that the, the slider is very very long but i'm going to use use this um, here and then open using Jupyter Lab. Uh, it's probably better. So to Honda activate G O S and then Jupyter Lab. Because um, in the past Visual Studio Code doesn't really support iPad widget, so it's X support and but it's not still not like one hundred percent. So if something goes wrong, you might want to try out using um, Jupyter Lab. So I'm open this one and then docs examples uh, iPad widget here. So now if I run this one again, it's probably um, a little bit better. So run, 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 run. See that? So that's not like a long. <laughs> it's maybe because I'm using a uh, uh, visual studio using a dark mode. So you see like the long white bar. This one is better. Okay. So now if you see this one here, I I can change it. How cool is that? Right. You can change the other layer layer. I can change the uh, the first one, the base map as well. So take a look. I can change to zero. Run this one. And now it's not changing the raster anymore. It's changing the base map. So pay attention. How cool is that? All right, everything is interactive, so you can uh, add a bunch of stuff to uh, to it. And um, next, let me show you how you can actually add some component to the map. So 
uh, in IPy lib that everything is a widget. So if you can add, there's a uh, thing called widget control. So you can add something to the map. Uh, let me show you IPy leaflet. Uh, just show you what where you can learn, right? It's called control. Then on the left side here, there's one called widget control. Okay. And this is basically how you add this stuff. You see here, right? Zoom level, right? And then pick the color. Look at this one. So import iPy widget, import slider, import something like that. And then so there's one function called add control, widget control. So what you need to do is to define a widget control and then passing the widget. Then you can um, add a position and then add that to that. So if you want, I can com copy this one. Come back to here. I can just paste it. You can just learn from the example. Okay. So once you know how to modify, you should be able to add it to the map. So look at this one. I copy the call. All right. Zoom label. Uh, the color probably doesn't do anything. Uh, but this is how you can add a component. So essentially, what we need is the if from IPy lib that import the widget control, and then uh, you need to you need to create an IPy widget. Uh, so it can be ink slider, color picker, and then the JS link. But uh, I'm going to show you here, for example, how how you actually add that one. Um, to the map so we can do something similar so now let me show you how we add actually add this opacity slider uh, to the map so that we can control the data layer the once the data opacity so right now you see the slider is at the bottom so what I want to do is to add the slider into somewhere on the map so that I don't have to scroll down right so this is essentially what you need to do uh, you there are a couple things you need so you be import ipy um, leaflet um, from ipy leaflet import uh, widget control uh, I think it's probably in visual studio code I uh, can auto complete right now I have to type everything and also uh, you'll be here uh, what's that um, from or import ipy widget is um widget w i d g t s and then we can design the opacity slider okay so i can say uh, slider equal to uh widget dot uh, i think it's called float okay flow flow slider and then flow slider so i'm going to uh what is that so the minimum Maybe just zero, one, and then point one. Okay. So with that, you can display the slider here. Uh, what is that? Probably you need to specify the parameters, minimum or the value, minimum and maximum. So the value will be very equal to point one, and then. Minimum equal to zero, maximum equal to one. Let's work now. Okay, so here, right now, we have this slider, right, from zero to one. The next step is actually to add this slider to the map. So here, as remember, so I believe they have the widget control. You can add any widget to the map, and so we can define a variable called control equal to uh, widget control okay and then this widget control has two parameters the first one is the control the second one is the position right so just like you look at this example here uh, widget control and then the widget and also the position just like this one so what we want to do uh, we can do the same thing we can say widget equal to this slider okay this is the widget we just created and we have to add this widget so we're basically we're adding this slider to the map so it'll be slider and then the position so i can set the position to whatever you want so it will be top right uh, uh top left top right bottom left and bottom right so essentially we only decide okay where do we want to add the widget okay so maybe how about this at the lower right corner so i can say the position equal to 
bottom right. Okay, so now we have this control. IPI leave that can now add the control to the map. So here you'll be m dot add control. Or you can just add. I think now the new version you can just use add. Or you can add control is the previous one. So I can just m dot add control. Okay, pay attention. I will run this one. It where is it? Oh, I need probably need to run from beginning. I think it's like because I run earlier some other See that? You see now the control on the map? So what we do here, we create a map, uh we add the raster, and this is the only uh the couple line uh I think we don't need this anymore. So what you need is basically just um a couple more lines of code. You need the iPad widget control from iPad leaflet. Uh, you create a widget, and then the widget, we're gonna create a floating slider. And then you just use widget to construct a widget control, and then add it to the control. So it might be a little bit confusing, so let me uh, say it one more time. Right, once you have the map, uh, you want to add something to the map. That, what you want to add must be as a widget control, because iPad leaflet only accept the widget control. So you have to construct this widget control. The widget control is composed of a widget. A widget comes from iPad leaflet. So it's like a sequence. So you create a slider, it's an iPad widget, and then use that widget to construct the widget control, and then add the widget control to the map. So it's kind of like a sequence, but uh, once you have that, you also have the map. Let me delete. Yeah, you also have the map in here. Right now it doesn't do anything yet, because uh, the widget control is not linked to the layer. So what you need to do, you will need to do something like this. This link, and then the uh, this layer, and then the zoom level, something like that. So what you need is actually one more line of code to link this with this widget with the layer. And in that way, uh, your layer, uh, your widget will be interactive. So now, what you need to do here, um, I think it's under the slider widget. Uh, here, you want to do something like widget dot this link so it's basically the javascript link so when the user changes the front end it's going to send to the back end and then to the comp basically it's like a loop so the js link means you can uh, link the attribute of the layer with the attribute of the slider so when i change the slider you're going to change the layer opacity so if you remember like something like this it's going to apply as uh, parentheses and then two parentheses so essentially we want to link these two together. And let's come back to here. What we want, this link, that means we want to link this one with the slider. Um, and then comma dot value. So when I change the slider, I'm going to get the value. And I'm going to sync this value with the data layer from the map. So it will be something just like what we did earlier. So you will be m dot layers right if you remember and then i can say negative one so they will be access to the layer and then change the opacity so the second one will be just opacity it might be a little bit complicated but it's not okay so zinc that means i'm going to the slider i'm going to link the slider value to this layer opacity so if i run this one and let's see what happened right now it doesn't do anything so if I come back to here, oh, it's already, okay. So now take a look. How nice. So you have this interactive widgets on your map now can control the layer opacity, right? Uh, you're welcome to add any more uh, more stuff into that. There are a lot more widgets. Um, so this iPad widget notebook has a lot of uh, examples, but the best way to learn will be just to go through the documentation. Um, in lab 8, I'm asking you to create, to add a function to your package that can add an image to your map. So take a look at, uh, pay attention to this one, right? So you can pretty much add anything to your, um, to your package. So uh, we have a lot of examples here, right? Numerical widget. If you run this one, right, import widget. So in slider is just basically the number in slider. So you can have a label, you can have a description, you can have set a uh, default value, for example, 2000. 
I run this one, you will see. And so iPad widget is flexible because, for example, if I say right now 2010, right, I can always get the value. So every widget, uh, most of them has a value attribute. Value means you can grab the attribute. So take a look at this one. If I run this one here, right, 2010. I can go back and change the widget. If I run this one again, it will get the value again. So it's always linked to the original one. So the widget is like running in the in the front end. You also have back end, so it's like communicating. So um, you can always make changes, and then you can come back. It's going to get a new value. So this is why we can have the map very interactive because when user change something, I can grab the value, I can pass it back to your source code, I can change something, and then do it display. So uh, in slider, floating slider, uh, pretty much similar. So just run, look at example, see how it works, right? In our progress bar, this is how we can run in the computation. You can show the progress, like it's progressing. So all you need is just change the value, right? So you can link the value with your other components, with your other processes, and then you can update the progress bar. Uh, or you can in text. In text means you can have a component and then you can have an up and down. So everything I'm showing you here can be added to the map. So it's just a widget. And then widget to the widget control, add the widget control. But you have to think like how you want the component to add, to, to, to do. You, if you want to do something, you need to write code to do that. Uh, and you can have a uh, checkbox, right? Uh, this is a toggle button, right? If I click, uh, it's change the color. Uh, you can have icon, you have all kinds of uh, different components, right? And you can have track boxes, so I can click this one, you can get a track value. If I uncheck, the value will be false, right? So you can also have selection. You can add a, a drop down list to your map. So, for example, this is three countries, right? You can have a drop down list to your map, and then when users select this one, you can zoom the map to the certain country. Can you do that? So basically behind the scene, um, that will be next week. I'm going to show you how we can actually link this one so we can do something when uh, after the user select something. For now, you just add that. You can use the JS link to do that, but if you want more complicated stuff, you need to do some coding, okay? And then all radio buttons, something like this. You can add it to the map. Oops. And uh, string, uh, text box. Text box means like how uh, multiple. HTML widget. <clears throat> and this is the one that for the lab 8 that you need to do. You see here, iPad widget has a HTML component. So it can pretty much run any, uh, display any HTML stuff on your map. So here, right, press all the description and then just set the value. This is one, for example, I want to add, I want to add uh, a logo to your map, right? So take a look at this one. Pretty good, right? But how do I actually add that to the map? So all we need is just to construct a widget. Let me show you quickly. Um, pretty simple, right? Import GOS demo. And then M equal to G, GOS demo dot map. Okay, map. So think about this. Right now I have a map. I want to add an image. I don't need to add any HTML. HTML is so flexible, so you can have images, you can have text, you can all kind of stuff in here. How do I actually add this one to the map, right? So that's, remember the step that we did earlier, right? So you need the widget control, you also need iPy widget. I can come back to here, so that I didn't do the coding. Uh, all you need is just to copy this two lines of code. And then scroll down to here. User, you want to add at the beginning, so just uh, add them all together in here. And then create a map. So next, let's construct uh, this widget, okay? So the widget actually is just like this. Um, URL, so I can maybe, uh, you can just copy this one. You can hard code it, but in uh, lab eight, I'm asking you to create a function that users don't only pass the URL to your, to your, um, to your function, and then they can display the image. So, uh, but I'm for simplicity, I'm just going to copy this one, and I can say um, widget equal to this one, widget equal to HTML widget. So basically right now we are creating a widget. Uh, and then if you want to display it, it's fine. W-I-D-G-E-T, right? See here, this is the logo. You can change the width and height. So this is how you customize the HTML. You can change it bigger if you want. I can change it to maybe 
300 pixels. Oops, way too big. Sweet. Okay, so I have this widget right now. You see, it's much bigger. So now I'm going to I want to add this one to the map. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, right? So we have the widget. What's the next step? What's the next step? Right? I saw you already, right? You have the widget, and then you have a widget control. And add a control to the map. So the next step will be to construct a control. So I can have a control equal to uh, iPad Live take widget control, and then you will need to widget passing the widget equal to widget and then the position this is where you want to put right i can put on the low bottom right that's it now i have the control and the next step will be just m dot add control take a look boom now i have the widget you have the image of course you have like a background here you can do something if you want but this is the simplest way that you can actually add something add a html to your to your map if you want to so i can create a function map to add image and then the url but you will need to for example i can come back to refine this one so make it a little bit more flexible so i can say url equal to uh so in that way the user can pass in any image they like I can copy this one okay so here will be just uh you can have the f string so you can use the f string and then within there i can pass in the url okay so in your function basically you need to ex oops you need to have something like this right a logo and then i can just user can just change this for our uh, function so you have to you need to have a function i don't want to show you otherwise i'm doing the lab for you okay so i'm just showing you behind the scene and inside a source code this is probably something you can do so let me restart my kernel just to show you what it looks like so here i i import my library i create a map and then i grab an image from the internet i use the image to construct a html widget and then i display the html widget on the map so take a look boom right now i can go online to like find any images so for example i can go to geography.utk right uh, there should be some images on any website so you, you're welcome to grab any website so for example here i i have the image here right click copy image url and come back to here uh, simply just do this way right um, but probably the, the you need to change the uh, the width and the height for example you have the width and height as a parameter for your function and then so the users you can you can specify when you add, add image so this one probably maybe 600 with 600 height like maybe 400 whatever you it might be distorted but it's the same thing right i have this then you can run run right see that because i act at the low right corner because you already bottom right you already have one here so it kind of uh you can go up but if you really would just want this one i can restart my kernel and then just run this one again always demo Create a map, pass in the URL, and then you should have the, the image showing up on your map. So in this way, you can add any component, right? How cool is that? You can zoom in. So in that way, when you def, uh, uh, disp, uh, develop an app, you can add widget, you can add uh, map, you can add uh, raster, you can you can add all kind of stuff because everything on the map is a component. So uh, it's a control. So you add the widget control, but you construct the widget, and the widget can be very flexible. You can add slider, you can add drop down list, you can add pretty much anything. So here, look at this, and this is what essentially leaf map. If you look at import leaf map m equal to leaf map dot map map. You see that? Oh, pretty much the same thing except this one we haven't covered this one here we will talk about this next week but this is how you can actually add so this is also from ipy widget it's a slider uh, you can have drop down list you can make changes 
Right. But of course, it needs some work to do the coding to link things together. But for now, at least you can add an image. So what you need to do is essentially go to your package and then go to your function under your main module. And then within here, so for your lab uh, 8, you need to have two functions. The first one is add raster. That one is for adding um, cloud-optimized GeoTIFF. But then you will need to have another function that you can handle add a static image, add a logo to your map. So it'll be something like this. DF add image, okay? And then it will be the same thing. For example, URL uh, with height position, something like that, okay? And then within here, this is how, what kind of things you need to do, right? Just like what I show you, that you will pass a URL, you construct the widget, and then you set the width and height. Oh, it's already done. And no, probably not this one, but just think about how you organize this. So later, when the user call this function, give you an URL, it will show up on the map. So just one line of call. User don't have to worry about, oh, widget control, widget. It's just too much. You behind the scene, you do the coding for them. And then you can you can also do it for the folium if you want to. It's a little bit more complicated, but iPad widget is very simple. So you construct, you can do any, uh, all kind of complicated stuff, um, widgets. We have a couple more minutes. I can maybe show you maybe um, uh, see if we can ask a chat GPT or maybe sample HTML, whatever sample HTML code. I can just grab any HTML code from the, the internet and I can show it on the map. So maybe images. Uh, look at this one right it's a pretty nice html so what i need to do simply is i can just i can just copy the html and you will show that on the map so now come back to here now look at this uh it's not an html anymore but you can i can just simply replace this one i see here they say uh html equal to usually you want to put like um three triple quotes and then write, write all your html inside and then be, in that case you have some you see here you have also have a double quotes otherwise it, it might cause trouble so you want to have triple quotes now we have this one i run it and i can just change the value to uh, html and then run it oops oh this one you need uh because the image is not available. So uh, let's try this one. Do the same thing. Or maybe the uh, Google Search logo. Let me do it very quickly. Where's the logo? Okay, how about this? So for example, sometimes if you want to add logo, you want to add images, you can mix up a lot of things within the HTML. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this one, the SRC to this. Okay, so now I have the HTML. I run it, I add a control. You see that? Although it's like a distorted, but one, my point is that you can add all kind of HTML to it. You can have text, you can have active images, you can have hyperlinks, you can have all kinds of stuff. So in that way, your map become more, um, become more what? Become more, flexible okay so it's not just a map you can because anything based right now is extensive if you're going online you are looking at website most of those are html so now you can bring in all kinds of things onto your map so that user can click in and you can play with that so you can provide more information uh, if you want to okay so that's pretty much uh what i want to show you uh today and it covers lab eight so make sure that Lab A should be pretty straightforward because we already did, I have finished the add raster for you uh, in the previous lecture. Today you just need to reorganize your code a little bit and then allow user to add any raster uh, image, static image to the map. And then make sure that you create two notebooks to demonstrate your functionality. Add those two notebooks to your website and then just submit the link to those two. The two notebooks demonstrate your functionality of these two functions. Okay, so that's all uh, for today. I'll see you next week.
Oops. Yeah, the recording is not stopping, so I'm not sure. Yeah, we might not have the recording today. Uh, the software is not functioning, so I'm not sure uh, we might have a video or not. You see, it's uh, not responding anyway. Sorry, yes. I had a quick question. Yes. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I was trying to like, you, the whole thing last night, we're like, mm -hmm. we can't copy and paste yours, obviously, because mm -hmm. there are functions that aren't, we don't have, and so I like, did some looking around, and I huh? found actually your comment oh, on here, and I found that iPod Leaflet does do geodata for two years <laughs> JSON uh -huh. based off of two JSON. Uh -huh. So I tried to use that, but it's telling me like the add GDF, which I think is like. So the add GDF is supposed to come from your function. Oh. Yeah, so here. Uh, where is the map? That? So do you have the add GDF function in your source code? Yeah, so you need to have something. And here you are add vector, you add raster, so uh, you need to, it's actually add vector, it's not add GDB here. You don't have the function here, add GDB, so you have like, I think it's control all, but not, um, not control all, I, yeah. control shift all, yeah, add, yeah, you don't have add GDB function in there. Okay, so I need to make an yeah, add GDF, GDF something like that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Oopsie. That's just like there's something. Yeah, no, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. Uh, why? Why is this happening? Uh, oh, you, you, you don't put this one. You need to us. If you just want to display it, this is a module, so you don't you don't do that. You, if you want, you can assign it to a variable. See? You assign this one to variable, display a variable. Don't uh, widget because the widget is the one the module here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It was interesting. Okay.